That was in Dante in C by Carulli. Um, we'll have a little lesson on this piece now and follow, it for, uh, follow the lesson for free. But if you're interested, um, I do have a free sheet music edition of this work. There's a link for that in the description. There's no sign up or anything. You just go download the free PDF sheet music and follow along with the lesson. So this piece is part of a, a collection of works that I'm putting together that are relatively easy and as supplemental pieces for my volume one and volume two method book. Kind of some extra pieces to play through um, as you progress through the books and before you move on to my graded, um, my graded series. So for this particular piece, I would recommend playing this one near the end or after my volume two method book. There's nothing complicated about the piece in terms of, of left hand fingering or even particularly right hand fingering, but because of those faster arpeggios and the contrast between the, the, the minor section and the major section there, and it's just a couple of the right hand fingerings, I would recommend, yeah, playing it during or probably after my volume two method book. So we have a, a pretty straightforward piece here. Um, we have kind of just two sections, like the first section in, in C major and then the, the second section in A minor, and then it returns, of course. So let's just go through that. Um, in, in terms of your tempo, wh whatever speed you're comfortable playing at for those 16th notes will probably decide what your tempo is going to be. Uh, make sure you're playing musically. If you have to go a lot slower than the tempo I chose, that's completely understandable. Um, playing it at the tempo I went is, makes it almost like an early intermediate piece. If you play it quite a bit slower, um, it makes it a lot easier and you just focus on different musical qualities. So instead of kind of focusing on the speed, you know, you can just focus on, on really truly connecting those notes. And at the beginning too. You know, you just focus on really getting a nice legato and some nice directional phrasing where you really take the phrase somewhere and make it smooth and, and contoured. So yeah, regardless of what tempo you take, you just focus on different musical um, aspects a little bit more. If you can add that, that tempo in there, it makes for a little bit more um, of an exciting piece in terms of forward momentum. But again, um, it's like a scale of different musical elements that you can emphasize. And, uh, and in terms of, you know, the tempo marking on Dante, that's kind of a walking pace. But the reason I chose to go as fast as I did is that at measure 17, I felt like that section wanted to be at a certain tempo. Uh, so therefore, I, I bumped it up for the, re the rest of the piece. Okay, um, I think we can just do a walkthrough of the piece. There's almost nothing to talk about in terms of the left hand. It's all marked on my score and it's all very straightforward. If you've worked through my volume one and two method book, you'll find it the left hand fingering very easy. In terms of the right hand fingering, there's just a couple of things to discuss. This first measure, often I, I, I play bass notes all with my thumb, even if it goes up to higher notes, especially for students, just to keep the voicing clearing. But the opening of this piece, um, doesn't feel like it that that bottom line is is really like part of the bass line of the piece so you can play it with I and M and then go into P I M I when you finish that chord you can play the chord with P M and A because you're ending with the I finger I P M A and then start again there's those little eighth note rests, I would, I would treat those as planting your fingers on the strings. So you, you plant your next fingers on the strings, so they're ready to go. And you don't have to make a big deal of those rests, just make it a little bit of a plant. So just follow my right hand fingering there, M, I, M. Measure nine. It says mezzo forte, but you can do a little bit of a crescendo, so start off with just a hair softer. All's very 
straightforward. And then just bring the energy down just a hair and, and just lower that volume a bit for the minor section. Here, this is the reason, you know, some of the right hand fingering here, it's all very easy to play, but you do you just have to pay attention. So there's more multitasking when you have to pay attention to the fingering. And that's why I'm placing the piece kind of, you know, more at the, almost at the grade one level. I've marked all the important fingerings. I mean, although we're just alternating fingers, it matters a little bit in this piece which one you start on, um, just to make sure all the arpeggios work and the cross strings. Uh, measure 25. Measure 29, any right hand fingering is fine. I use A, M, I, but you can just use M, I, M. It doesn't, doesn't matter, just alternate fingers there. Um, I would do this one in the way I've notated, so P, M, P, I, P, M, P, I, P, M, P. Uh, in terms of the layout of the piece, uh, you repeat each section where the repeat signs are. So, you know, that's every eight bar phrase you're repeating. But when you do the D, C, L, Fine, so you go back to the beginning and you play all the way to the Fine without repeats. Um, you don't need to do the repeats on the fin A because we've already heard that material quite a bit. It just it's bringing it back. So in one way, very straightforward piece. In another way, I think that students just they'll have to really work on what tempo they're going to take. And that might require more practice of the arpeggios for a little bit of speed. Um, also, uh, working out just, you know, how legato can I play this at a slower speed to make it sound uh, really good.